Zungin <coughs> Dogunji Danam Jizamber Tamje Kedo Taki Chut and Baldin Savella Marumboje, Dagi Jibur Bemendish Cardin Chimbe Gone Jizon, the Guzon to Jimu Dubs Aldo, so Tabi to the Shatter is so chung, Shinjimi to do Jit Punjumba. Sergio Lombo, Tabu Jibeko, Shaji Jabe Shabla Chata Chaton, Colo Jibe Jabaton, Genton, Cabasan, the Sangiton. Dans la conduite, la terre d'un bâtiment, la terre de la chasse, 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 la Chamjin me shedam pushing the Gishi Uji Marit Mimbas, Chuji Jasup Dora Denze, but Gandin Shubatella Chatsalo Nalindaro took them six inches, something color, six shanty deva shaja, la matella Chatsalo Shaja Tamjas the Bejam, but Dugunjil to the two jit. Some year till the betom or Jamgun, Lamaja Logoja, the Shaja Tamjas the Bejam, but Dugunjil to which some year till the betom. Jamgun Lamesh of Logo Chata, Shaja Tom Jesse Bejam, but Dugan de Lidube to Jetchen, Sammy Tillis de Betonga Jamgun Lamesh of Logo Chata, so a depth of Lama Kinseva, just some Chilama Kinsev. Shinchi love Chilama Kinseva, Tangman, God Lama Kinseva. So there is Zigna Lama Kinseva, two Jesu Chilama Kinsev. Tenno, Tenno Lama Tinsi de Chenno. Chinlap, Tertian Daniel Lama Jambal de Cheno, Joguital, Ingi Colo, Namsam Kangi Chaldanso, Nesem Tachi Tambe me Bategun Gumbe Suzuji, Jasitu, Namtrasajin Jachetala, Nirzozu, Yapjinil, Hashental, Reva Magic Kangenta, Ninsen, Kundu Jamen Kubesam in Chiji Tuji Show, Tumse Mene Menjasuni Rangin Epile Bese Tadon, Kenyan Major Perdo Chapshin, Solvar Majoroche. Pomodinu <laughs> Please generate, remember your bodhicitta. <clears throat> you have made decision that until the end of samsara, you will remain, that you will attain complete enlightenment. This was done on your own accord. You you did that, you made that decision by yourself. So please remember that. So then, this session, this gathering is nothing but continuation of our um, <clears throat> bodhicitta, just a mere extension. Um, that's how we should think, speaker and listener alike. I'm in Gelupa house right now, so 
The fifth alelama, this is what he said in his lamrim, that there are all kinds of speakers, complete enlightened speakers who know it's even wrong to say a complete enlightened being knows. It's like to know, you have to be conscious. In consciousness, being conscious, it's so limiting, almost an insult. When you're conscious of something, you're always not conscious of many other things. Consciousness also shows an activity, and we are talking about the state that is beyond activity, that is beyond um, sequence. Recently, a teacher of mine told me that, he said, I asked him a question, this is not important, but the answer was that, he said, we are so attached to sequence, he said. We are so attached to sequence and we are convinced that things should happen um, one after another. So first this should happen and then that. And he said this, this belief, this trust, this habit is what binds us, binds us and um, <clears throat> is the, um, the reflection of fundamental ignorance. And that's so true. But we have to say such things. We have to use words like omniscient. Omniscient one. One who knows everything. So the fifth Allah Lama, this is what he said, that there are omniscient ones who knows everything, who knows exactly what is needed, when is needed, to whom, in what manner, in how much, to what degree. Um, and so you have speakers like Shaktamuni Buddha who would say, sometimes he would utter just two phrases and that would liberate someone. Just two phrases. Imagine. <laughs> Imagine if that would happen right now, right now to, to, to Pallavi, who is in Delhi, for, for, to attend something mysterious and important. Imagine this how this would happen right now that she would be speaking to a completely enlightened being who knows exactly what is needed, exactly, and would utter a few words, and that's it. She's no longer Pallavi anymore, the one Pallavi we know. It's just that close. Almost frustrating. Well, that we don't have right now. A completely enlightened speaker. I don't know about you guys, but definitely not me. And then he says there are speakers like Bodhisattvas on Bhumis. Tenth Bhumis. First, second, third. Who are not completely enlightened, but they have the capacity to, to liberate beings again. To, they also know our mind, they know hundreds and thousands, countless of our lives, our habits, all of our secrets. That would also be very nice to meet such a teacher too, in front of whom there is no secret, there's just no secret. You do not feel the need to hide anything anyway, to just there is no pretense, there is just every, every word you utter will, will be true. Of course, then so when such a teacher speaks to us, it's just like, radiant sun. I'm sure some of our teachers are like that. Definitely, they must, they must be completely enlightened too, but at least to this, to such extent. Some of our teachers, when we talk to them, it's like standing in front of, in front of a vast ocean 
or just at the edge of this universe, so to speak, you know, just, just, just so vast, the mind is so vast and clear. People like Chongsa Kinsa Rinpoche, Jingmi Kinsa Rinpoche, when you, when you talk to them, they really, um, their sincerity and their sort of Um, in the tantras, we are taught that also in sutra too that a yogi can can alter their appearance and perception. And I really truly believe that when we are in front of them, we are no longer what we think we are. For them, we're just something else, mere reflection of their wisdom. I don't know what we are, but you really feel it. That, you know, you feel like standing in front of a very clear mirror. It's just there's no, no pretense. No need for it also. Well, that kind of teacher is also not here. So then the third kind of teacher is someone who just learned something, who wants to help. Suppose you can put me there. And to such a teacher, fifth Dalai Lama, he said in his Lamrim that um, I mean in the sutras and in the shastras, there's so many ways the teacher should think about there's like five points, six points, ten points, how the attitude should be like this, the conduct of teacher should be like that. But he said at the end of the day, the teacher, the speaker, regardless of he or she, or regardless of their own practice or their own liberation, mm. all they should care about is the liberation of the listener. And that is possible here, I think, at least for this one hour. Um, for a few minutes, I can accept, I can just push myself to think like that. I have good reason too. Because I'm reading texts written by future Buddha, Maitreya. This is not a text written by a scholar who I don't know where is reborn now. <laughs> what use? But this is a text written by Maitreya. Not someone obscure, but someone who was there again and again and again during Shakyamuni's journey. Some of you know what a fanatic fan I am of Shakyamuni Buddha. I'm really becoming like, um, um, these days in India, there is a term, Andhbhakt, isn't it, fellow? <laughs> I'm becoming like that, like a blind, blind follower. I really, of Shakyamuni. I think this is due to the, again, due to some close proximity. Uh, like once in a year, I get to see Chongsa Kinsabhati, right? Like, so that is impacting, <laughs> maybe. There must be, there's no other reason. So then, Maitreya is now the second best sort of option. People like Maitreya and Manjushri, those who have just, been there during the journey of Shakyamuni through and through. Actually, I think Maitreya even said something like, or Shakyamuni himself said, Maitreya was like an older practitioner than Shakyamuni in terms of how long they been on the path. Um, so externally, he pretends to be a Bodhisattva on the 10th Bhumi and he pretends to be so late, so to speak. He, he pretends that he, uh, that because Shakyamuni was more compassionate, diligent, that Shakyamuni went first, <laughs> got enlightened first, and he, he sort of comes after Shakyamuni. That's his display. So then, when I think about that, I guess there is 
there is a reason to be confident regardless of my afflictions, regardless of my distractions and personal shortcomings, I can 100% believe that whatever I say during this session, these sessions can liberate us because it's all from Maitreya, it's from Asanga, people like Kimbo Jenga, Mipham um, Rinpoche at times, if I can read um yeah we're in the fifth chapter bodhicitta um <clears throat> I'm really bad at segues these days, you know, you know what I'm saying, like <laughs> to, to make connection with the last session and this session, last chapter, this chapter. Um, but please read Mipham Rambuchi's commentary. It's translated. And who better really to, to, to do that than him? Um, Tibet has never seen a scholar like Mipham Rambuchi. Um, <clears throat> so in the last session we ended here right that says um, about um, that talks about um, kind of loss and shortcomings you will experience if you Mm. Um, abandon bodhicitta, right? Especially, so he's, it's more like a comparison between those who are on the Mahayana path and those who are on the Saravaka path. Um, so then I will read the next stanza. This is 22, fifth chapter. As soon as the wise arose the sublime intent, their minds are completely restrained from committing infinite evils. Ever virtuous and loving as they grow in both, they delight in experiencing both happiness and pain. Hmm. So, um, Kempojenka writes, but then if there is a doubt that after having taken, um, Bodhicitta, since you are supposed to remain in samsara for a long time, then there is a chance, there is a danger that I might fall into the lower realms. And that is very undesirable. That is why maybe it's better that I follow Asravaka, I follow one of the path of um, the lesser vehicles. Sorry, mm, ground vehicles or fun, fundamental uh, vehicles. If one thinks like that, because you know, mm, Mahayana, we talk about um, endless samsara um, and also the in the Theravada tradition, as we discussed last time, there is no bodhisattva path, bodhisattva bhumi. They believe that. Siddhartha was an ordinary man and within an instant, like within one night, he became completely enlightened being. So there is no first Bhumi, second Bhumi, according to the Sravaka tradition. So then 
to contra contradict that, to, to remove such, um, um, such kind of thinking. And Maitreya says, no, there is no such fear, no need of such a fear. Lodin, he says, wise, the wise one, Semgi Cho Chematas, who will generate the supreme of mind. So here we are talking about um, ultimate bodhicitta. Um, he says, so such a wise being who have generated the ultimate bodhicitta. So now we are talking about bodhisattva um, from first bhumi onward. Such a being, such a being's mind is forever bound, forever bound from harming other beings. Once, once you reach the first bhumi, it is impossible that can you that you can ever harm someone else. That's so desirable for bodhisattvas because that's what we want. Obviously, not just not to harm, but we want to benefit. And first benefit we can give to sentient beings. We can so the first good thing that we can do is to make sure that. I myself never become a cause of their suffering. Mm. Because um, ultimate truth is realized, afflictions are abandoned, so there, there is no, no cause of Bodhisattva to, to generate anger, to generate um, obsession and such ignorance. And so no result of harm to sentient beings. And this is so desirable. It really is. Um, earlier, practitioners like Milarepa would, Milarepa, Ishi Tsoja, you know, Jokmi Lotsawa and Sachin Kunganyam, these people, they practice, they practice to until enlightenment, so to speak, especially Milarepa, when he go and he went to, practice to think about courage of that man he, did, he was not talking about oh until sixth boom or tenth boom oh, it's just complete enlightenment this life that's what i want so earlier practitioners were like this and then recent practitioners like gatun lawan lekpa um direct student of Kinse Wangpo and one of the root guru of Chuchu Lodra. He received, of course, so many teachings, but especially Sakya Lamde teaching from Kinse Wangpo. Um, and Kinse Wangpo is one of the lineage masters of Lamde. And it was him who really preserved it and who taught it to he was the one. And the lineage still continues. And he, people like him, he went to retreat, strict retreat, when he was, I think, in his 30s. And decision, and his was until I reached the first Bhumi. Um, I will not come out. So. He came out after 15 years, but he just what he said, until I reach the first one, I'm not coming out. So uh, um, some of you may have seen him, Kenchen Ape, the one who established IBA in Nepal, direct student of Kinsi Chuchu Lodru, one of the greatest scholar, really one of the greatest scholar of recent century. Um, it is said that even Dujum Rumbuche would, every time when he would write a text, he would send a copy to Kempu Ape saying, please, can you check if I made any mistake? <laughs> and Kempu Ape would never look. He would put it on his head and put it on the shelf because he knows if he looks, he's going to find something. <laughs> and he too said that, it is said that he made a, 
promised to King Sri Ludwig that he will reach the first Bhumi in this very life. And until then, he would not let anybody make prostrations to him. When, when we saw him, he was already in his 70s and we were allowed to make prostrations. So everybody kind of, we all knew like, okay, now that's sort of the sign that he has reached first Bhumi. It's so desirable. This is so desirable. Complete abandonment of afflictions. And of course, there are um, enumerations such as, oh, you get to see 100 Buddhas at one time, you get to you get to be 100 bodhisattvas at one time. You're no longer one person when you reach first Bhumi. You're 100, 100 beings. And each of these can emanate 100. So that's, I don't know how many hundred thousands it becomes. And you can, at one time, you can liberate 100 beings. <laughs> Somehow it's 100, 100, 100 for whatever reason. How desirable is that? Yes. So he says, it's impossible. Once a bodhisattva sees the ultimate bodhicitta, kematas, as soon as that happens, which is now we're talking about the first Bhumi, they abandon um, aggression towards all sentient beings forever. So, teachers, because of that, the Nindu, Jigbarayam, Majurus, they have no fear of lower realms. Think about the structure of this sentence. Because they have abandoned harming or all, all harming um, sentient beings, they have no fear of lower realms. And and first Bhumi Bodhisattva is always, always joyful. Why? Because he says, Gewe Letangs. They have they have virtue. They have virtue and means and they have great compassion. Compassion that we just cannot fathom. Our compassion needs a reason. We need, we need to see someone suffer. Um, that's like um, um, like a like the light produced by a firefly, even smaller than that maybe, a spark, very short. We need to see someone suffer. And our compassion depends on so many different things. But a, a, a being who has seen the ultimate truth directly, their compassion is known as objectless compassion. There is no, no um, they don't need a reason to be compassionate. It's just like the sun. <sighs> don't be scientific now, okay? Don't, don't argue with me, but it's just like the sun just shining for no reason, so to speak. You know, that's what people used to think that just shines there's nobody's like lighting anything now we kind of say oh this and that gas you know combustion and all that but there is no this these beings are compassionate just because of who they are no reason no reason needed and so whoever is in front of them experience their compassion Someone who is suffering, yes. Bodhisattva on the first Bhumi will be extremely compassionate. Someone who is not suffering, same. Bodhisattva on the first Bhumi will be extremely compassionate. There's no reason, no such reason. Um, and also we cannot fathom such a compassion because um, to think about, to think about the Dharmata that, um, how do you, how do you, Go. How do you understand 
nothing truly exists and yet have such compassion to all sentient beings. It's just, mm, I forgot there was one, one um, paragraph of Trungpa Rinpoche's. I have repeated that many times, but this other project people may remember. I'll try to find it, that, that kind of compassion, that you're compassionate because of just, yeah, it just comes from within. Sorry. I, today I'm so carried away by things. Um, anyway, so because they have married, give a thanks, right? And because they are extremely compassionate, they are joyful because they are meritorious. This you can experience when you do something good, you feel good. That's just in the sutras, it's like the Buddha nature speaking to you. Awakening, you know, when you when you're compassionate, when you when you're compassionate, it removes fear from your mind. Like when you're compassionate towards someone, automatically it removes aggression, it removes fear from your mind. Mm. Like that, being meritorious, you're joyful. Uh, so here, of course. Bodhisattva on the first Bhumi, their capacity, their ability to be meritorious is unsurpassable, at least from our vantage point. So, of course, they are joyful and because they have great compassion. Mm, he says, because they have great compassion. This is beautiful again. I'm feeling a bit guilty that how come we never talk about this text like how come? <laughs> this is so good. He says, because the Bodhisattva is so compassionate um, that they are joyful, that obviously they're joyful, but they're joyful even to go through sufferings, he says, even, even when they have to go through suffering. A discomfort, their joy just it spreads through and through. Dila shenji neba chena, lendu neba cheba sito namna mindes. Oh, I think the next stanza, right? Okay. Somehow I feel like we're not going to cover a lot of stanza today. But ordinary speaker, you know, it's like that, depending on mood. Wait, let me read the next stanza, Anna. Kansi shenji tenjir lyudangli sola meta rabdal kelemba teta vudde shenji nebai jitar ngembar chepe lela jokes. Please. It's 23. <clears throat> At that time, for others' sake, they accept hardship with no regard for their own bodies or lives. How could such beings do anything bad when others do them wrong? Yeah, how could they? Um, <clears throat> so, and then again, if there is ever such a doubt that, um, so you have to remain in samsara for a long time, right? And then it could happen that when 
someone harms you, then automatically um, you harm them in return. Or when someone you benefit, someone you um, help harms you, automatically you might uh, harm them in return. So now these questions, the quest the one who is the, this hypothetical person who's asking this question is our ordinary mind basically. Because it it's just always goes back and ask all these questions from from the point of view of an ordinary person. And this for us is true. I myself if uh even though not directly I you know want to harm someone but when someone I have helped they um, I feel like they're not grateful at all then I'm no longer willing to help you understand <laughs> then I don't want to suggest their name to other people you know like so you are you I, in this way I am harming them you know so it's very difficult so now the doubt comes if such a thing happens you know to the bodhisattvas too he says no why because bodhisattva on the bhumis kangit says when they change it change it rangi lutang ni so na mita wa rato ngawa khe lemba teta wu te shel ki na ba che pa yi jitar jitar na divu ngembar che bar chi pe ni ge vi le la ju he says well we are talking about a being who is willing who is willing to do anything um who is willing to overlook um their own sort of physical survival that they just do not even care for their own survival for the benefit of others lutans one's own body so class one's own life bodhisattva such a bodhisattva on the bhumis they are like this so then ranging our kill numbers yeah they 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 embrace they they accept they em embrace embrace sorry i suddenly forgot how to pronounce that they embrace such a such a conduct such a um, so then um in the this is also an important point um, in uh uh in entering the middle path um also in uh ornament of clear realization by maitreya other text by maitreya um now we cannot know who has reached the first bumi or not because we cannot judge we do not know their mind only someone on the first bhumi and above can know who has reached first bhumi or not. But there are physical signs that we can rely upon. It's not foolproof, but still um, there are some signs. So then one of the most important signs is Rangshatterlang Kuber Chebai Pogto Mirung Duryang Nawarj something like that in the entering the middle path chandra kirti says <clears throat> external signs of um sort of um, that that shows that someone has reached the first bumi is that when they when they give um, themselves to others when they give their own flesh to someone else who is not even grateful who is not even thankful but when this bodhisattva gives this when a when a person gives their own flesh and bones to someone else with respect rangshatablan kuper chepais um yeah that one can understand as a sign of uh, someone having reached the first bumi mm. So here, he says, yeah, such a being, they don't even look at their own well-being. Then, Jitarna, then how can um, 
um, when when someone harms them how can it bring bad result how can it bring aggression and negative karma jitarna dilung ember chebra chebe mige ve lela jugde kalde shela neba mije chang rangi jor ve se khengba tang gu ve se na sem shum de sem je me dokan men shir okay this is the next for the next tense um yeah so this will never happen he says because you you need you need to have fear you need to have fear to to be aggressive you cannot be aggressive if you not if you have no fear even on an ordinary sort of world you see that those who are truly powerful they are more or less peaceful <laughs> there is no fear those who who have lot to prove i almost said something politically incorrect hmm. it's right there it's just right there in <laughs> my tongue okay dogs i'm going to use example of dogs small dogs and big dogs <laughs> if there is any dog lovers small dog lovers i am so sorry but you can see that big dogs are calm usually they're calm they know their presence is enough no need to shout they just walk in and sit and look at you the small ones they make a lot of noise <laughs> they make a lot of noise i think it's because they think they are weak because they are small <laughs> you understand <clears throat> Why did I why did I talk about dogs? Wait. Sorry. Yes, what is that word? There is no fear. When there is no fear, the whole point of violence is no no reason for violence anymore. That's what we need. No fear. So, yeah. Then the next one, mm, he says. <clears throat> I feel like more people should hear these stanzas, you know, they're so good. I'll try to do something with this. Hmm. Where is it now? Sorry. Dey chugun juma tabutans. Oh, this is so good. Dey chugun juma tabutans. Chawa chame saldo tar ton. Jorbe thi dam gube thi nang di. Nyamong dunga thagi jing. Nyamong dunga thagi jipa mes. Hmm. The next stanza, please. Hmm. Twenty-four. Having realized that all things are like illusions and that taking birth is like going to a pleasure grove in times of prosperity and times of trouble, they are not afraid of defilements or of sin. Um. <clears throat> Now again doubt. Okay, fine. Bodhisattva 
such a bodhisattva is not going to be aggressive and harm beings and so such a bodhisattva is not going to suffer in samsara go to lower realms and so on it's almost like he's trying to convince someone who is sort of going towards the sravaka path you know maybe he was uh, maybe he is mm. What a way to teach. So he says, but what about one's own um, shortcomings? Like um, when, when the Bodhisattva um, is wealthy, sort of known, everything works for this being, then what about pride, he says? This is so good. What about pride? And then when Bodhisattva is hmm, destitute, when the Bodhisattva, you know, nothing works, no, no one respects, no one cares, no one, you know, really, when such things happen, then what about, um, what about um, sort of a, a, a um, some shumba? What about loss of confidence, he says. This is so good. And when that, when that happens, when you, when you are proud, won't it harm the bodhicitta, he says? Won't it harm the path? Or when you have lost confidence in yourself or in your practice, in, in, the, in the path, instructions, in Buddha Dhamma Sangha, in your teacher, won't it harm, he says? Won't it harm bodhicitta? Won't it remove or destroy this bodhicitta? Chanju Simbadi, Chukun Jumataburu, Tongwe Sirtans. He says, No, this will never happen. And now these reasons are so good. He says, Because, first thing is, such a bodhisattva sees all phenomena like a mirage. We talk about it, they see it. They see all phenomena like a mirage. Um, who can we use as an example, the one who is still alive? He saw this Dalai Lama when he was, I think, in his 30s. Um, and he was reading a a text, a scripture, um, which talked about um, the non-existent of a true self within our five aggregates. And he just read that sentence and it said, and he said, as soon as he read that, everything began to not um, sort of dissolve, but not that they, be, they vanish. It's just, he said, it's just, you know, and it affected him for weeks. He couldn't trust anything. No table, no chair, he couldn't trust anything. Like now, when someone will appear and say something, or he will feel something, everything is not worthy of his trust as a truly existing phenomenon. And he, and he spoke to his teacher, the previous Ling Rinpoche. This is happening to me, and I want you to Tell me if this is a correct or a proper experience or some sort of obstacle. Ling Rinpoche praised him, saying, Excellent, someone like you, if you keep practicing, soon you will become uh, what is known in the Kala Chakra as a space like yogi. People like that are still alive. We're not talking about someone who was alive centuries ago, even decades ago, still alive. So this Chugun Jumatavurutong with Sirdas to see all phenomena like mirage. So there is no way a Bodhisattva will be um, will be prideful or um, lose confidence. Mm. Um, 
Tewa kemi tsaltu dowa tara tongis. This is now the second one is really good. He says, and the Bodhisattva, the experience, the perception of such a Bodhisattva is when they go from one life to the next life, it's like, um, it's like how we, how, uh, maybe not even us, like how, uh, how a king or emperor or a um, <clears throat> prince or princess would go from one beautiful garden to the next. No one stops them. Everything is open. No, no obstacle. Mm, yeah, all the causes and conditions assembled. So, from this life to the next life, there is no sort of sense of loss. There is no sense of um, leaving things behind. Things sort of um, then there's no sense of um, unfinished business, so to speak. You know. And then to the, when they go to the next life, there's no fear, there's no anticipation, there's no hope. Um, no matter what happens, no matter what arises, all illusory. So this. Because of that, when everything goes well, there's no pride, there's no affliction. Or when nothing goes well, there is no um, sadness, there's no loss of confidence. There's no, so there's no fear of su such suffering. We are afraid of such suffering. We actually, um, to be afraid of losing confidence in poverty may be easier, simpler than being afraid of pride and arrogance, neglect um, when everything works well for you, when you're well known and you know, this is more difficult, I think, very difficult. Because pride, pride is very, uh, pride can be reasonable sometimes, you know, pride can be rational sometimes. Um, and when it happens, then it's just so difficult to realize that it is that is what is happening you're completely swept away um, so yes for us we really have to keep checking our mind again and again and again um and we and and if you think, oh good, I have no pride. And if you're not a Bodhisattva on the first bumi, you're not you're not analyzing well. It's not it's not it's not well done. <laughs> uh, yeah. Mm, wait. Am I still on the stanza? Rangi yuntim simchin pendo ga. Samshin kewa dutu number two. Yen dan temo sacho tse gawa. Ninji dani mimba nam la mes. Next stanza. Five, they delight in the ornaments that are their own qualities, in the festive fare of helping sentient beings, in the sublime location of their voluntary birth, 
and in the entertainment of miraculous displays. Um, wait, where is the English? Maybe there's one more line. Um, I'm a little bit confused at the moment here, but I have also such delights are not for those who do not embody compassion. Such delights? <clears throat> yeah, are not for those who do not embody. Yeah, that's, that should be also there, yeah, the last line. I will put it in the chat. They delight in the ornaments that are their own qualities, in the festive fair of helping sentient beings. <laughs> so nice. In the sublime location of their voluntary birth and in the entertainment of miraculous displays, such delights are not for those who do not embody compassion. It's a very exclusive club. Right. <clears throat> Let's see what Kimpo Jenga says. Rang um Rangi Yundinji Semjin La Pendobe Gawa Pendobe Gawe Sam Shindu Kewe Kewe Kemusal ki Zutujin number Tulbe Gemtam Penmotam Sachotan, Semi Gawanam, Ninji Dani Changju Semba member nam nam methods. Now he's talking about rebirth in samsara, like such a bodhisattva now, first bumi, second bumi, you know, rebirths. How are how do they how are they born? Like how do they benefit beings? Um are they are they sort of in nirvana, like like an arahat? Uh, do, do they relax in sort of um, in their deep meditation? What happens? He says, no. Such a rangi yuntinji simjin la pendobe gawi sam shindos. Such a bodhisattva is like um, mm, is is joyful that they can benefit sentient beings through their own qualities, through their own characteristics, not that. Uh, such a joy. Imagine, imagine each one of us that, you know, imagine that if you could just, wherever you go, things get better just because you're there. Now that's what we're talking about here, like Maitreya. Reason why he's called Maitreya is because was because countless of eons ago when he was a monk and he was you know, practicing kindness, loving kindness. When he would go to beg for food, just anyone who is who will see him, who is in that area, will become kind automatically. And people, while they're fighting, in during their fight, they will suddenly stop and feel so much kindness towards the other person that they would be confused what happened. And then they will hear a noise at the door. A fully ordained monk usually have this stuff with uh, um, these metal, round metals to make noise that says, and then would say something like, uh, please give me um, you know, food. And then they open the door, my, the monk, this monk is there. And this happens all the time. That just, just by his presence, that people just feel joy, that they just feel so much joy. That's why he was named Maitreya. Mm. Someone who is kind. So here, he says, Bodhisattva, is so joyful that they can benefit beings not even through 
like um, external phenomena, you know, no, they don't even have to do anything. It's just for who they, how, however they are. <laughs> Most of the new age things that they, we talk about for ordinary people, actually it fits for Bodhisattva. That just by being themselves, <laughs> they benefit so many beings through their own qualities. And so they are joyful. They don't need things. They don't need to do things to make beings happy and joyful. It's just their qualities. And because they know this, this happens and they notice that and they know this. And so they are joyful to get rebirth. So getting rebirth is like going to a, to a, to a park, to a nice sort of meadow. It's a nice place for picnic for them. It's like that. So, what can we say? Okay, salki, zutu je number chulpes, and and it's not no longer now. Rebirth is no longer through like our rebirth is through ignorance and karma. We have ignorance, and that through that, uh, when this ignorance um, come together. So this ignorance meets circumstances. Um, we accumulate karma, and that's how we are born. So there is no freedom, so to speak. There's no, um, and it's like a real samsaric birth. Whereas the bodhisattva one is like a fake samsaric birth. They are born in samsara, though. Like like look at our teachers. You know, they have parents. The parents must have sex. You know, so <laughs> it looks like a looks like a real thing. You know, but it's not. All pretense here. He says, number tulbe." It's a miraculous way of rebirth. And so, not only that, then um, um, they can they can even appear to be very. What do you call it? Um, again, anyway, they have natural ornaments, and they could also appear with ornaments. And tanmodans could be very, uh, how to say, um, um, yeah, um, can be um, like they yeah have many displays. Um, Tanmo more like. Um, like an act, like a show, like a show, such a um, and so wherever they go is like a um, like a pristine realm, and whatever they do is like a play, like a play, and so they are joyful. Again, he says, so they are joyful, and so such a joy can only be experienced by a compassionate bodhisattva, no one else. So again, I think it feel like it is a um, nudge, sort of a, towards the arhats, you know, uh, and to, to pull beings towards the Mahayana path, to the Mahayana path. Mm. Um, Shinden Sunden Ninja Dani de Kans and Narme Palang, Guard Zimba, Terra Wata Sina Shinten Chip Dunga Jonam, Dunga Jon Namji Kalajiks. Yeah, next answer. We finished this chapter today. This is 26. Um, and it says, Striving for the sake of others, these lords of compassion, even when in the hell of torment unsurpassed, consider it to be delightful. How could such beings be afraid of the pains they suffer for the sake of others in existence? Hmm. Hmm. I'm a bit disappointed with myself because 
Well, I can understand why true. This text I studied right after studying Ways of Bodhisattva in Shedder. Now, Ways of Bodhisattva is just it's, um, mm, for people like me. Of course, all of these teachings, they are equal, they are, you know, great and all that. But Ways of Bodhisattva is really, really different among equals. They are, they are, they, this text is so good. Really, it's just, it does something to you, even when you do not practice. Like, like I said many times, you know, monks, you know, in Zongsa, the first, first time, first year, there's a lot of fight because you have monks from all background. Some just came out of army, you know, some just somewhere from school, somewhere from you know, villages. Some even monks since their childhood, so they're more relaxed. So you, you don't know. Some are forced to be monk by their parents and they're like just so frustrated. You never know. The first year there's a lot of fight. And then we study ways of bodhisattva. And then nobody fights for the next 10 years. That's like, like the power of this text. Mm. So then right after that we studied this and I, I'm a, I have a kind of a, a my own karma, but you know, our teacher was convinced that as is many people, you know, scholars too, great masters that this is the chitta matra text so then automatically when you hear ah chitta matra ah well you know i just had like the best thing that the best the highest madhyamaka in the ninth chapter of ways of bodhisattva why do i need to bother these people are our opponent in the ninth chapter that's what we think you know, like, chitta matra. so um i never really looked at it carefully in as, as, a, as a practice manual and now you know when i look at it i really um, when we were um when i was studying in zongsa he, he just ignored us for the first five six years i remember like almost seven years he, would, he wouldn't even come he would just show up maybe once two three years uh one day he came um, that was after our great abbot passed away. So now he had to come. He was, it was his time, you know, before Kinchin Kungho Bangchu would just take care of everything. So Rinpoche just even, he would just ignore us. And he said later too, that I ignored you on purpose, you know, Zongsa. And then he said something that really disturbed us. Me, it really disturbed me. Um, because up until then, I used to think that, okay, I, I don't know Abhidharma, Pramana, and all this, but I know Madhyamika well. I used to think like that, at least entering the middle path, you know. And then he said, he gave us, he gave a very, like, wonderful talk about how to be a Dhamma practitioner to 500 monks who <laughs> studied, like, really some of them are real scholars. Mm. Then he said something like, uh, Saktapas and the Gelupas have ruined, he said, Saktapas and the Gelupas have ruined um, Madhyamika Avatara, the study of Madhyamika Avatara. <laughs> and it was so painful because I'm Saktapas, like I'm, you know, uh, <laughs> in those days especially, I was a Korampa sort of, you know, Korampa guy, whatever Gorampa says. And it was so painful to hear that Sakjapas, when he said Sakjapas, have ruined the study of entering the middle path. Um, and only years later, when I just read the root text without any of Tibetan arguments, now he said it, so he, he said it to us, because that was needed, that was the next step. Now, do not kid yourself <laughs> thinking, thinking, ah, well, then I don't need to know this at all. Please, 
if you meet a such a teacher who is then talking about all kinds of um, mm, philosophical arguments, pay attention. If you meet a Gelugpa teacher, again, who's talking about a lot of like, a philosophical points and differences between schools, maybe you listen, really. Don't, don't kid yourself into thinking, because these are, these are commentaries written by great teachers. Manjushiri, it's sort of himself appeared as these masters. So not to belittle, but when we grasp upon it too strongly, and that becomes the problem. And later I read just the root text of ways of both enter, sorry, entering the middle path, and I was quite ashamed actually. Because this is such a pure, pristine text, and I have used it as a weapon for like sectarian bias, you know. And um, all these texts, thinking that, oh, this is Chitta Matra, again, sectarian bias. I think I am Madhyamik, this is Chitta Matra, not ours, nothing to be concerned with. And so, I have lost really precious years that I could really admire this, read this. Um, and yeah, now that when I look at it, it's just, this is, this is really um, the heart of Mahayana. You know, there's no, yeah, all right. Then, <clears throat> um, ดิมัลกิจิปะกาเวชิรเชปะเนชินจิทุนละซุมบะตันเตมปะนิงจิดังนิจินดีชินจิทุนเชปะคังกิเซนนอนเมเบเมนนอนดุจุปะลังกาว
kind of move from first boom second but how it is <laughs> oh no it's just dissolving into the this place and off they go to the next one no walls yeah thank you this is very difficult how, who can say only someone on the boom is how do they die um Tukdam phenomena is very uniquely Vajrayana, but not just Vajrayana, to be honest, also in the Sutra part, and even the Zen tradition, you know, you can read that there's a lot of, um, that many masters pass away in meditation, sitting straight and so on. Um, then it's, took them thing is but but yes Vajrayana took them thing is very unique bodhisattvas on the bhumi i don't know maybe maybe they remain in took them maybe they don't need to remain maybe they die horribly it's all a play <laughs> maybe they die you know <laughs> when we look at them it looks terrible how they die but for them it's just, you know, just a display. How would we know? Who can tell? I really don't know. But yes, they have to traverse path. Um, that much is for sure. First Bumi, second Bumi. But how it is done, when it is done, we can only guess and estimate and read text and remember things. But I don't know. Right. Who else? Oh, hi, Michelle. Yes? I have a question. If you are not uh, in a bummy, someone like us, uh, how would you show love to someone that harms you? Oh. Um, the idea of harm will dissolve. Just the, remember before, there is no fear, no fear. When there is no fear, you cannot be harmed. There are practitioners, um, I have met masters, when I go in front of them, I don't know what to do. I really don't. What do you do? Do you talk about the weather? Do you, what do you do? I can do that with someone I think is ordinary like me. And I say, where you, what did you do yesterday? Well, how was it? Who was there? I cannot do that to these people. Mind, our mind, it, you know, um, we kind of get, a, um, get influenced when we're in front of these beings. Dakshin Rinpoche was such a being. His holiness, Dakshin Rinpoche, another Sakcha, great Sakcha master who passed away. He used to live in Seattle, I believe. Um, the grandparent of Dumse, Asanga, and Avikrita, you know. He was like that. My whole face started vibrating to in front of him. I was so afraid. This man just was so free. Mm. So there, there's no such, um, such effort to show compassion to someone who harmed you because there, no one can harm you. That's just the, the cause is already no longer there for, for like a harm, you know? It's, such, it's really something we should aspire. We want to become Buddha. Now Buddhahood is far away. This is, we're talking about first bhumi, already. The notion of harm is not there. When um, we believe that Nagarjuna lived for 600 years, you know, I believe that. 
I really believe that. 600 years, of course, why not? Prove it otherwise. This is an important question, you know. If someone says how to prove it, you prove it otherwise too. It should be 50-50. Mm. Because he accomplished Amitta Yus. And Nagarjuna, it is said that because he lived long, his friend also lived long, who was a king. And so the kingdom had only one king for like centuries. <laughs> and there was a prince who really wanted to be king. And he, one day, when he was young, one day, someone gives him a very special um, piece of cloth. <laughs> and he likes it so much and he tells his mother, can you keep it? I want to wear it when I become king in future. And then the mother says, that's never going to happen. This, then you will die without wearing this cloth. It's why? Ah, because of great Nagarjuna. He has sort of elixir, so to speak, you know. So through his practice, your father also has lived very long and so many princes have died. <laughs> so, um, but he's adamant. So then his mother says, there's only one way. Nagarjuna is someone who is free. So you, you cannot kill him. You cannot intimidate him. The only way is that he dies willingly. And Nagarjuna is supposed to be Bodhisattva, the first Bhumi. At least someone who have achieved the first Bhumi. So then the prince goes to Nagarjuna and begs, basically begs for his head. Because he thinks without head, you cannot be alive. I, I want your head, please. And Nagarjuna agrees. And how did they cut the head? He tried, they tried cutting his head with a sword and axe and nothing worked. And then Nagarjuna says, Oh, bring a certain type of grass, he says. <laughs> Only that grass can cut my head. And they do that. He brings this grass. Mm. And it works. <laughs> there is no harm, Tatiana. Only compassion. Who else? Okay, I think that's about it. The church also rang their bell. Mm. Please make the education. Thank you for studying this. Please study this. You'll probably not study this again. So now when you read, listening to this, at least read it once. Ah. By this merit, having attained omniscience mm. and defeated the enemy of wrongdoing, 